Welcome to Beyond Food and Wine, a Le Cordon Bleu podcast. In this podcast, we get some real insight into the food and hospitality industry from a variety of renowned chefs, industry experts, and Le Cordon Bleu alumni. Join us as we hear the fascinating stories and unique experiences behind some of the best known names in the industry. Hello and welcome to Beyond Food and Wine. I am delighted to welcome Vidushi Banani, who is an a Le Cordon Bleu alumna and co-owner of Café Volante. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back at school um, <laughs> to do something very different than what we did earlier. Yeah, it must be strange to be back in the building after a couple of years. Yes, especially, I mean, just from when we entered, it looks very different. I did my course during COVID. Mm. And um, as, yeah, I, I, seeing full faces here without a mask is very strange <laughs> because I barely remember my classmates' faces because we were always in a mask. Um, it was never so busy because I think they used to have the schedule so that not everyone is in together. Yeah. So... Um, it's a lot more busy and the environment is, I mean, it was great when I did it as well, but it seems a lot more lively now. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's uh, having seen both sides, it's it's night and day. But yeah. you're one of those, you know, rare few that actually got through oh. Le Cordon Bleu and COVID <laughs> at the same time. So I think you're in a different class. Oh, it was uh, it was a challenge, especially mm. um, especially sort of. We instantly had to, at some point, switch from coming in person to being remote for a few things. And that was, I think, the biggest. Because I think in person, we would still get through long lectures. But mm. at home, sitting through that two hours would be, it's tough. It's tough to mm. keep your attention going. Um, but it was it was good. It was a learning experience. Good. Well, I'm glad it didn't put you off completely. That's still good. like still love the school and still love the industry. <laughs> good, good. So... Obviously, since you graduated, you've been quite busy. Can you tell us about your business, Volante, and how it came into being? So, um, just as I finished Cordon Bleu in December 2020, um, I probably didn't look hard enough, but um, I wasn't finding anything interesting in the hospitality space that, you know, caught my attention or a role. I mean, remote working in hospitality isn't ideal because the whole point of it is, you know, interacting with people and um just being around different sets of people mm. at all times so um yeah as i said i didn't probably look hard enough but i didn't find anything that interests me so mm. this was always I, I always wanted to start something of my own and a cafe is something that i realized is a good starting point mm. um it's much less pressure than a restaurant it's a small operation and i thought i'll do this maybe after a year or two of working in the industry but um it just so happens that in the lockdown, um, I am a co-founder. So uh, my co-founder, Haleen, and I, uh, it was the lockdown where we were allowed, we were allowed to have bubbles. Mm -hmm. So both of us were a bubble. And um, she used to come, we um, used to sort of train together. And she would, I would keep telling her about my ideas mm -hmm. that I had for, at the time, Volante, the name didn't exist, but for, you know, this brand. Yeah. And, she was very excited about it and she and and I kept saying to her but you know I don't have any experience mm -hmm. she's from a very different industry she's from fitness mm -hmm. but um it is a wellness linked brand yeah so um she was a good fit for it and she said well different industry but I have experience in London working mm -hmm. for 15 odd years mm -hmm. so she thought if I can combine her experience and my sort of ex expertise in the food industry yeah we could make a good team. So she said, if you're willing to take the risk right now, we can do it together. So that's how in my garage, actually, that we came <laughs> up with uh, Volante. And um, the brand is basically, so even the reason why I joined um, Cotton Blue specifically for the nutrition and gastronomy mm -hmm. course is because I'm a big foodie. I've always been my whole life. I probably spend 80% of my day thinking about food. <laughs> love eating out, love trying new places, traveling for food. and um, But I also sort of, you can always see um, health implications of mm, always you yeah. know, eating out, drinking, and all of these sort of enjoying, indulging, really. Yeah, of course. Um, and early on in life, I realized that there has to be a balance. Um, but balance doesn't necessarily mean sacrifice. Mm. So there had to be a middle ground where, you know, you can eat, you can still indulge, mm. but then, you know, there should be a balance where some of the food that you eat has to be cleaner 
Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean it has to taste bad. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> the other thing that, um, as I was enrolled at LCB and I was getting the chance to experiment at home, um, finding a sort of healthy, delicious meal in mm-hmm. London earlier was hard. Mm-hmm. I, w- I went to university here as well. And in my university years, I did not find any so-called healthy place. Mm. The food was just a bit bland and mm. boring, very repetitive, salad-like. Yeah. Um, even the salad-like places were not great. Mm. So there was a gap in the market and that was my initial idea. I wanted to fill this gap, you know, find basically... It's a personal problem. I didn't find a place I liked, so I wanted to fill that gap. And um, I, even as I was enrolled here and I was experimenting, I saw that, yes, it's quite easy to sort of make, um, you know, foods we like eating, mm. just in a cleaner fashion, using yeah. lesser ingredients, keeping things fresh. And that was the idea behind Volonte, sort of um, eat everything in moderation. So right portion sizes, which I learned from, obviously, the nutrition mm. studies here and um, just sort of being smart about how we combine foods to get better health benefits from them. So yeah, the brand is basically about um, doing everything you can, not sacrificing, yet maintaining um, a sort of healthy lifestyle mm. as you go about it. Yeah, I think that's brilliant because, you know, obviously it's it's not healthy to go one extreme or the other, really, and you just kind of need something a little bit more centered and balanced um i think you know you don't get a lot of that you know everything's either one extreme or the other um so obviously as you mentioned you studied the diploma in gastronomy nutrition and food trends what drew you to that diploma particularly so um after my undergrad as i was sort of i did my undergrad in something completely different it was sort of tech mm-hmm. related and i didn't want to ever enter the industry <laughs> i always wanted to sort of study nutrition mm-hmm. i did do an online sort of diploma during my undergrad yeah. but um again it wasn't enough mm. and i was looking to do something after i graduated and i also was getting interested in um the actual application of nutrition mm-hmm. principles yeah. so obviously cooking in a healthier way and um i was looking online for i didn't mind i didn't mind sort of going to even a different city but mm-hmm. um pre- preferred london and sure. i was looking and my sister actually found this course um over here and she said why don't you look at this one it seems she didn't understand what it was but she said mm-hmm. it, it has the words <laughs> that you kind of look for so yeah. maybe it's the right one and then i found it and I think it's one of the only courses um, in the whole world, really, that instantly all the nutrition knowledge you gain, which is just book knowledge, really, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you see, you can basically start to apply the principles in reality um, at the same time, mm-hmm. which um, is quite unique. And it also teaches you, so nutrition can teach you a very sort of black and white way of looking at food. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, but when you actually cook, you realize all the gray lines in the middle, all the fun Mm -hmm. you can have. And I think seeing a combination of those two is what drew me to it. I didn't, and especially because in the future, I wanted to get into the, this industry, um, cafe and hopefully in the future restaurants. So, um, learning how to do a practical application, um, was what drew me to it for sure. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause you, you know, I suppose you do see a lot of nutrition, based courses that don't have an element of actual culinary arts uh, attached to them. And so why do you think, to you, why is nutrition so important and how does it fit alongside gastronomy, in your opinion? Um, You know, as you say, it doesn't have to be boring, doesn't have to be flavorless, but how does that work? So nutrition in basic so when you look at all of our cuisines of the world um whenever they were created our ancestors Mm. civilizations in the past they had this knowledge Mm -hmm. they knew basic nutrition principles they knew what was good for them and they knew what wasn't yeah so actually um it's very important to learn from old traditional food which um it's basically for example things we learned about um plant-based um, protein, mm-hmm. how to get complete protein from plant-based food. And it's all about combinations. And if you mm-hmm. look at all cuisines all over the world, um, a lot of them do combine these foods because they knew that that was the outcome. And learning about 
um, what we need and then seeing how to basically the, these combinations exist it's just about deep diving into mm. astronomy and seeing how to make sure they also taste sort of well while not um, I think it's important especially with so when you study nutrition you learn about food in mainly its raw state mm. and obviously cooking denatures a lot of that mm -hmm. so when you learn techniques that don't denature the food yet cook it off well mm -hmm. um that's when you really maintain a good nutrition profile. Mm. So healthier, uh, so-called healthier, but just different cooking techniques, um, which we experimented with during the course, mm. I think taught us how to not denature and, you know, cook for long hours, mm. and, you know, literally deep fry in fat, mm -hmm. things that taste good, but aren't necessarily the best for you. Mm. So these techniques maintain the integrity of mm. all the ingredients, still brought out the flavor. Um, we definitely... I think also when traditionally sometimes when you study culinary arts it tends to be very specific to one type of cuisine yeah um, and fairly so it's it's very sort of French influenced mm. because um, they are the pioneers of mm -hmm, it but mm -hmm. in our course is especially because it was different and because um, nutrition in different parts of the world is slightly different and even though we did one sort of quite specific to the UK but taking on a global perspective of it mm. when we learned in the kitchen we were learned, we had a different cuisine influencing each different class so we learned how to apply those principles practically because we learn from different cuisines mm. in the world i think different techniques yeah yeah no that's really good i suppose the trouble is we're as yeah, as humans we're victims of our own success really with you know not I mean we can get any ingredient at any time and so we're not working with something that's fresh and at its best you know for the season or you know we can have you know, just just too much choice yeah. I think you know perhaps it's about being a little bit more simple in our approach and I you know I particularly think, think in the western world you know we we've lost that kind of connection with our food Really? I think definitely. So the food trends part of the course was actually quite interesting as well because um, I, I like to call it um, the Amazon effect. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to pinpoint the the blame on anyone, but mm -hmm. yes, they made it easier for us to live. I use Amazon all the time as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. But you, it's taught us that you know we can have anything whenever we want, and a lot of food trends these days sort of arise from the fact that we can have anything whenever we want it. Yeah. And at the click of a button. So that doesn't really fit well when it comes to, um, so nutrition again is, a lot of it is based around the area you live in or you come from mm -hmm. because you should be, your body is almost conditioned to know how to digest Absolutely. things that are in your local environment. Yeah. And when you start eating things that really are not from it, it's almost a bit of a shock for the body. Mm. It, it, the body will learn, but it is a shock. And mm. it's not a shock you should be giving it too often. No. So it was nice to see how so many food trends, which especially like quinoa, avocado, mm. who's, um, even chickpeas for that matter, mm. a lot of these things aren't locally grown in the countries where they became very popular. Of course. Yeah. And yes, they have great health benefits. Um, and I serve all of them at Volonte. Sure. But it has to be in moderation because... Mm. The minute you hop onto a trend aggressively, you also sort of harm the industry of mm. the farming of the industry. Yeah. It gets um, because they have to grow it in um, a larger quantity. Um, the nutrition pro the, they over farm and the soil is damaged. The actual ingredients don't have um, the best mm. nu nutrients anymore. So. Um, learning and seeing how these trends work and trying to make sure that even though you, you, you need to go with the trend a little bit but you need to learn how to maneuver mm. around it a little bit as well incorporate it but not make it the main focus yeah absolutely um, so I think yeah sort of reteaching people to eat seasonal eat fresh mm. and I mean eating fresh is the easiest way to be healthy right you can you can eat fried food, but, you know, if it's seasonal and fresh and obviously, you know, lightly fried at home, mm. there's really nothing wrong with it. And as long as you eat it once in a while. Mm. But that's the beauty of eating seasonal. You don't have it all the time. Mm -hmm. So you do eat it only once in a while. So mm -hmm. 
you almost have to remind people to not just jump on a trend the minute it's there. Just try it once, but yeah. Yeah. remember to go back to basics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing wrong. You know, no one's going to tell you never try anything new, but just don't suddenly have avocado every single day. Every day, exactly. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, you have some food rules, some of your top food rules that really do focus on being quite mindful and intuitive about food. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about this and how, how committed you are, I suppose, to these rules around food or, or guidelines. I think rules make them sound a little bit strict. Stiff, yes. yeah. yeah. But um, I think, yeah, so because of how much I enjoyed eating out and mm. I am a foodie, I definitely tell, tell people not to restrict, mm. even though a lot of nutritionists out there or generics or dietitians will give you very strict plans mm -hmm. I think those are not sustainable sure so anytime anyone asks me for advice I always tell people eat what you want mm -hmm. whenever you want it because the minute you restrict yourself you will end up binging later mm -hmm. and that's the worst so I would say whatever you're feeling you're feeling a chocolate you're feeling a glass of wine have it just make sure you tell yourself it's not your last glass of wine or it's mm, not your last chocolate. Mm. So just eat the one or drink the one and be happy. Yeah. Because if you keep restricting, you'll do it one day. You eat have too much of whatever it is and then you'll see the negative effects. Anything in moderation isn't bad. So that's definitely one to remember. Mm. I like just tell people do everything in moderation. Don't be extreme. Um, <laughs> and then I think the other thing is a lot of people spoil their relationship with food with this whole new ideas and trends again of leaving food groups out uh -huh. again this pulls on my point from remembering that cuisines were created for mm. a reason every food group is important mm. yeah so there's really no reason to sort of unless you have a severe allergy towards something mm -hmm. or something does not suit you at all if and or there's a medical condition where you need yeah. to avoid something unless any of those things I'm play, you should just eat a bit of everything mm, really. Mm. So yeah, encouraging people to, you know, eat carbs. There's nothing wrong with carbs. <laughs> um, not be scared of fat and not yeah. to overdo the so called healthy fats. Yeah. Again anything too much of anything is bad. Mm. So I encourage people to yes, just sort of don't don't hop on a trend just because you've seen it. Um, don't hop on a diet just because you've seen it. Yeah. Just sort of Listen to your body more than listen to a trend. Mm. Um, and don't spoil your relationship with food again by eating it mindlessly. Mm -hmm. I tell people not to eat at their desk. Yeah. Try and it, it takes five to ten minutes to eat, really. Um, if you just actually look at what you're eating and think about what you're eating, you'd probably feel satisfied a lot sooner. You won't mm. eat too much. Um, and you'll again be mindful of what you're eating, you might not eat bad as often right? mm -hmm. because you yeah. actually look at your food. So just yeah. a few ways to easily, it's more about being simple about it than complicated. Yeah. The more you complicate, the worse it gets. Absolutely. I think that's the thing because they're, they're not difficult rules to follow. And, you know, whereas being restrictive is always going to be a challenge, you know, no matter what it is that you're restricting, as soon as you tell yourself you can't have it, that's when you want it the most exactly. you know we're only human that's what you know, yeah. we're all like it's, that it's our natural tendency mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely so I want to just change the subject a little bit and talk about you being a judge for both Great Taste and British Food Awards how did you get into that field how did that come about yes so it was um it was interesting actually so I worked with um a chef as um he was sort of consulting and helping me as I was developing the menu for Volante mm -hmm. as because I'd never done it before never really worked um in the industry for a long time or anything so menu development was something I was a bit a little less confident about mm -hmm. so um he was an experienced um chef he um, was now doing this as his job. He wasn't working full time as a chef anymore. So as we were working together, we would obviously bond over mutual love for food <laughs> and flavors. And as we would try different ingredients, he sort of picked up on the fact that um, I have a, a sort of um, expansive palate, you can mm -hmm, say. Yeah. And um, I particularly, I think he just saw that 
um, I, I tend to be quite unbiased towards sure, food. Yeah. I, I do have personal tastes and I obviously sometimes if I don't like something, I don't eat it. Mm. But um, when it comes to in- ingredient integrity, if I know something tastes good with something else, sure. I will definitely, you know, combine them. And mm. so he saw that and he thought um, he was a judge for um, the Guild of Fine Food with Great Taste Awards. And he um, thought that I could be a good fit, mm-hmm. especially with... Um, they recently have new categories, uh, things like um, plant-based foods sure. and um, so things like that. The name and, or, and coffee is uh-huh. also another one of them. So um, he thought, with my sort of experience from this school, where mm. they actually taught us a lot about flavor profiles mm. and um, sort of sensory experiences around food, which mm-hmm. is what you have to see when you are judging food in an unbiased yeah. situation. Yeah. So he thought with the education I got here and just my sort of love for it, I could be a good fit. So he suggested my name mm-hmm. um, and they, they, they liked what they saw. So they invited me to judge and it's been, it's been great. Great taste especially um, has been interesting because you don't act, it's all um, um, unlabeled and you don't know what's in it. You don't know mm. which brand it's from. Yeah. So you have to be decently unbiased and yeah it's it's um it's been a fun journey you you learn a lot about what's out there yeah. in the retail food world and you can see i i pick up on trends that are gonna be big mm-hmm. because um, people have started to produce these yeah. and um yeah great british um food awards is a different one um it came i think being a part of great taste um, helped getting that. Yeah. A different type of judging, it's more sort of category based. Um, okay. So there you know what you are judging, but you judge based. So I, I'm only a judge for two categories, or I was last year. Um, it was for um, sort of vegan mm-hmm. foods and um, health, healthy boost was the section. So basically okay. healthy options. Mm-hmm. Um, and a different way. Great taste, you basically judge purely on does it taste good or bad. Okay. Um, but here you have to look at everything else. So, yeah, drawing on my nutrition expert, really. Oh, okay. Ex- uh, expertise where you look at overall it as a product and then you award it. Based That's on so that. interesting. Yeah, it must be really, really fascinating to, you know, experience those new products and uh, have a little bit of insider knowledge about trends and stuff. Oh, yeah, and learn about new ingredients. So yeah. Um, there are so many ingredients that I had never even heard of, but mm. they're, they're being used now in a big way. Yeah. And, um, it helps because you can see, um, I mean, sometimes it's just for a trend they make, yeah. but sometimes you see that, okay, this ingredient actually works in a good way. And you can, it's a learning process for me as well. So yeah. I, I find inspiration. That's really good. Have you ever um, come across anything that was absolutely disgusting? Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean... I will say that the, the plant-based industry is getting a lot better at what they sure. do. But for a lot of things, they aren't quite there yet. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of vegan cheeses I have had are possibly the worst things. <laughs> and it's very heartbreaking for us to write negative feedback, of course, of course because that was yeah. someone's hard work. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I was on the other side, hearing oh, yeah. A, that I didn't get a star, mm-hmm. and then hearing some judge, you know, really say awful things about me, yeah. it's hard. It's hard sometimes to write negative comments mm. constructively but again you have to be constructive give them sort of helpful feedback um but yeah for some of the things which i put in my mouth i just i don't <laughs> know what to say and it's, it's hard yeah. it's difficult no i think it is a particularly a particularly challenging category and i was raised as a vegetarian throughout the sort of 90s um <clears throat> and things were pretty grim back yeah, then so they've definitely improved but still you know certain it's a bit, it's a decent long way to go <laughs> yes I think flavor so. wise I think the ideas are definitely out there yeah um, and they are trying for the right things I would say that the plant-based meat industry has gotten quite big but yeah. they need to shift their focus back on sort of just whole simple, foods yeah, I think simple yeah vegetables grains yeah. legumes easy things I agree I think the trouble is you know there's been a lot of making making plant-based food for a meat eating market exactly yeah. um but you know i think maybe there's a little bit of a t- on the turn you know towards the just using fresh vegetables and exactly and, uh, and just keeping things fresh and you have very simple 
good vegan um, or plant-based options when you keep yeah, things Yeah, absolutely. Easy. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be as complicated yeah. as they make it. So going back to um, your time studying at Le Cordon Bleu London, how would you say that it helped you establish your career? I think um, in, in many ways, but if I were to highlight, I think it's such a prestigious institute that, um, and, and for good reason, they really do. Um, I'm not saying that they're super tough on you, but they're not the easiest. So <laughs> mm -hmm. definitely graduates from here know how to work in a tough environment. Um, and having that sort of badge of having yeah. studied in an environment that teaches you all the good, proper sort of skills you need mm -hmm. to work in this world. Um, having that helps um, when, especially because I was so, I was new to the industry, mm -hmm. having not worked in it. Um, when people would hear that I have studied at this institute, they would take me a little more seriously mm -hmm. because they knew that I had a certain skill set, mm -hmm. um, which this school is known to give their students. Um, plus, I think it's a great place to because of, I mean, yes, London especially. It's it's one of the larger, um, uh, larger schools of yeah. the whole overall institute and. But it's just the global network is so big, so the alumni network to to connect with people, to find yeah. people is great. Um, a lot of the people who actually taught us when we were here, so um, because my course was different from the others, mm. we had food marketing um, where we met people from London who had agencies and mm -hmm. um, I actually work with a lot of them mm -hmm. now. So um, definitely studying here gave me insight into people who work in this industry and not just specifically as chefs but yeah. overall in management in again marketing in um retail mm -hmm. so it's it's it gave me a good foundation um from a network perspective mm -hmm. i could definitely find good connections from the alumni and from um the people who, yeah, taught us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I think that is definitely one of the, the biggest um, bonuses is that you get to know people from all walks of life, from everywhere around the world, especially because it's London and it's so multicultural and diverse and everyone kind of just congregates here. It's brilliant. Um, so would you recommend the diploma to others who are sort of looking towards similar aspirations as yourself? I think definitely. I think this diploma is very, um, it's very unique in mm -hmm. the way, as I said before, it gives you a very practical application of a very book-based subject. Mm. Um, so I think definitely someone who's entering um, sort of the health food or mm -hmm. the wellness space, um, I think it's definitely something that, again, and it also teaches you about um, in the health space, in the nutrition space out there, there's trends is a big thing. Something yeah. becomes trendy and then it's the next big thing. This course teaches you about those upcoming trends and how to sort of go around them, mm. how to not over, um, sort of just overindulge in yeah. making your whole business about the trend. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I had very low cooking skill before I come, came here and in comparison to the traditional sort of um, cuisine dip, um, diploma or degree, mm. I think this one is a good, um, even though in that you can be a beginner and learn from scratch, mm -hmm. yeah. but this one, um, because I didn't, my plan was never to become a full-time chef, mm. um, this one gave me enough of a skill set to know how to work in the kitchen, but um, it's definitely a, um, less intense from that mm. front. So uh, we have good knife skills, but we're not sort of, and for someone like me who didn't want to work um, in the kitchen, having basic knife skills is all I mm. need. I don't need to be tying as, vegetables. Or, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as good as some of the people I hire yeah. need to. So from that perspective, it gave me a much more rounded um, skill set versus super special mm. um, as a chef or in management, for example, yeah. or in the wine and management. So for, definitely for someone entering this sort of space, mm. 
I would recommend. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. So finally, and I hope that you're going to give us some exciting information. Yeah. Um, what is next for you and Volante? Um, so it's, it's a good time to ask me this question because um, we recently decided to expand to two new sites of the cafe, which um, are in central London. Fantastic. Um, one being in um, on Piccadilly, actually, mm -hmm. and the other, hopefully, we'll know the location soon. Um, but definitely expanding the brand. I think London is ready for, we've gotten a good response mm -hmm. to um, you know, having a fresh food, healthy concept. It's unique in some ways and different to others mm. that exist in the space. So positive response from customers. And I'm looking to fill the gap more, encourage yeah. people to eat with the principles mm -hmm. that I mentioned um, in this recording, but also, um, yeah, just sort of remind people that you don't have to be extreme. Mm. And hopefully the more locations I have, the more I can spread and preach. Um, <laughs> and um, I would also like to, uh, of course, do more judging, maybe mm. um, a little bit of, so the judging has actually taught me a little bit about food writing and nutrition writing. So hopefully expand in that front as well. Um, I do write a little bit for some publications here and there, Cool. but I would like to do that in a bigger way. Yeah, yeah. Um, starting to write a blog also. Nice. Um, and uh, yes, maybe also start um, a more lifestyle driven nutrition consultation where people don't necessarily come to me for a very strict meal plan, but mm. more sort of on guidelines on how to just go about their day. You know, I can give them advice on if they're going out for a meal and, mm. you know, what to eat at a restaurant, how to make better decisions about mm. food versus having a strict sort of set yeah plan yeah so maybe um looking to doing that as well professionally fantastic well absolutely we'll make sure we share everything that you're up to on yeah. our channels as well um and wish you the very best of luck for your next opening thank you and thank you so much for joining us Vidushi. we'll speak to you again soon thank you Thank you for joining us for this episode of Beyond Food and Wine, a Le Cordon Bleu podcast. Keep up to date with all our news and episodes by following us on social media or by signing up to our newsletter. Links are included in the episode notes. Until next time, a bientôt!